While preparing to board a flight back to my adopted home, I overheard a lady talking to someone on her cell phone about her plan to give birth to her child in the U.S. so that her child could obtain U.S. citizenship. I began to wonder if she understood or even cared about what responsibilities she and any child she had in the U.S. would have. You see, in nations that proudly state that they are welcoming and democratic, immigration, citizenship, and in particular, birthright citizenship, have become political tidal waves that have led to contentious debates that caused those planning to relocate to the U.S. to start a new life to think cautiously about their perspectives. Policies concerning immigration, citizenship, and birthright citizenship in the U.S. need to be updated and redefined to keep up with current events or events that may take place someday in the future. Now, listen carefully to this episode to the end before jumping to conclusions. Welcome to Four Seas One Family. I don't believe that those immigrating to the U.S. are all criminals or have motives to take over and destroy the country. Still, the reality is that some are trying to enter countries like the U.S. to do precisely this. I'm also aware that some who have immigrated to the U.S. have taken part in protecting the nation by risking their lives. And some have even paid the ultimate price. I know many hardworking people who have become American citizens. Most don't come from privileged or financially fortified families. They are just ordinary, hardworking people, many like you, looking to better themselves. They are criminals or have backing from their birth nation. In fact, some would be considered part of their birth nation's forgotten population. Many wealthy people can essentially buy U.S. citizenship by securing investments in America, which often goes far beyond what regular people from any nation can possibly do. Also in the past, people from certain nations that fit a particular profile could take an expressway to become U.S. citizens simply because they were members of a group of people those in power at the time in the U.S. preferred. More concerning this in a future episode. There are other ways foreign-born individuals can become American citizens, and none can be said to be easy. Still, there are systematic and legal ways to become an American citizen that I prefer people take. Now, without going into too much detail about rules and unique situations, there are basically four ways a farm-born individual can legally become a U.S. citizen. Citizenship through acquisition. The most common and natural way to obtain U.S. citizenship is to have at least one parent who has been a U.S. citizen from birth. In this situation, no matter what nation you were born in, you will automatically acquire U.S. citizenship. And when married, your children will also automatically obtain U.S. citizenship. Citizenship through naturalization. The second way to become a U.S. citizen is through naturalization. Naturalization refers to a foreign-born person voluntarily becoming a U.S. citizen by applying for and meeting requirements that confirm the foreign-born person's eligibility, which usually includes prior permanent residency or marriage to a U.S. citizen. A foreign-born person must also take an oath of allegiance to support the U.S. Constitution, defend the country, and renounce loyalty to another government. Citizenship through deprivation. The third way to become a U.S. citizen is to have a parent who has become a naturalized U.S. citizen. Children living with their naturalized parent who are under the age of 18 and permanent residences or green card holders automatically have their citizenship passed on to them. Citizenship through birth location. 
，投过出生地，获得公民身份。The fourth and today the most controversial way to become a U.S. citizen is to be born on American soil, which includes Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. However, it should be noted that in typical situations, children born in the U.S. to foreign diplomats do not get U.S. citizenship. This birthright citizenship allocation has become controversial because foreign-born individuals who weren't U.S. citizens or naturalized residents have been coming to the U.S. using student or travel visas while pregnant, with a plan to give birth to their child in the U.S. Now, if the child is born in the U.S., the child will automatically become a U.S. citizen. The Fourteenth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution deeply inscribes that any person born on American soil who is not obligated to have allegiance to another nation is considered a citizen, and this opens a door for their parents and maybe their extended family to also become U.S. citizens. To those planning to give birth in the U.S. so their child can obtain U.S. citizenship. You must be aware of your child's responsibilities as a U.S. citizen. Here are just a few: obey local, state, and federal laws and regulations; respect the beliefs and opinions and rights of others; serve on a jury when requested; support the U.S. Constitution; and in case of war, defend the country. Your child will have many rights people in certain nations wish they had, such as the freedom to express themselves, worship, legally pursue a goal, have trial by jury, run for elected office, and have their votes counted in elections. These freedoms are fundamental rights American citizens must be willing to protect, so that future generations can also enjoy them. If the need arise, would you allow your child, as an American citizen, to protect these freedoms and privileges, or would you send them to your nation of birth so that they can avoid their responsibilities as a U.S. citizen? These are just a few questions for those wanting to obtain U.S. citizenship for themselves or family members. Ask yourself if you or your family members are willing to unconditionally support the nation they want to get a passport from, or are they only concerned with the benefits of possessing a preferred passport? You see, every nation has flaws, and the U.S. is just one example of a country that has made many mistakes. Still, because of the determination of its people who wanted to be treated fairly. It has kept moving in a better direction that still needs improvements. If you become an American citizen of my birth nation, I hope you help improve our nation for us all, and not only for yourself. And if you are an American citizen or of any democratic nation that you feel isn't up to your standards, step aside because you will become irrelevant. Others would be more than willing to replace you to enjoy the privileges you have, and if you are replaced, I won't blame them for taking your place. And that I take this obligation freely. And that I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So help me God. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome as citizens of the United States of America. In future episodes, I will continue with topics concerning immigration, citizenship, and birthright citizenship, and mention those who have immigrated to the U.S. and helped make America great. Thank you for joining us here at Four Seas One Family. Please subscribe and download our podcasts, and remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world, because we have a lot more in common than we think.